Oh yeah, I know I threw something in there. We should just give God some praise right now. And let us go ahead and give God some praise as we ask our bishop, our pastor, to come up and share with us a ring of word this morning. Come on, somebody. Let's give God some praise and welcome Bishop Target this morning. Come on. Let's give it up right now. Let's give it up. Confirmation and affirmation on this morning. Repeat after me. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. And today, and today I shall be taught the I Word of God. I shall be taught the Word of God. And in this Word, and in this word is, my salvation. is my salvation. In this Word, in this word is, my is my healing. In this Word, in this word is, my is my deliverance. In this Word, in this word I'm, set I'm set free. I can have. What it says I can have. I can be what it says I can be. I'm blessed going out and I'm blessed coming in. I am the head and not the tail. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I shall be a living sacrifice. I shall be a humble servant. I shall be love in action. Now, I, now if I receive this word of my own mind, this word will be dead to me. But if I receive this word with the revelation of the Holy Spirit, this word will be life for me. Now, I do not need religion in any form or fashion. What I need is life. What I need is this word. Look over to your neighbor and say, let's receive life this morning. And give God some praise. Oh, come on, let's really give God some praise this morning. In the absence of my beautiful wife and my family, as my son Mike is once again struggling with asthma. But I'm already claiming that as he gets older, he's just going to grow out of it. Amen. 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 It is something else when your baby looks at you and, and really can't breathe and there's not much you can do for him. But my wife and I had some things scheduled yesterday and we canceled them all and I stayed home with Peyton because she had a couple of friends over for a sleepover and my wife stayed all day with Mike at the hospital. Calling me on the hour, giving me hourly updates and got home late last night and poor fella woke up this morning and was still struggling. But God is still good. That's right. That's right. That's right. Because we're the enemy would try to steal his breath. 
there is still that but life. Amen. Amen. Come on, give God some praise for us. There are some folk who struggle with this thing all their lives. But I still give God all the glory and praise even in his healing. Amen? Amen. Amen. And I want to reiterate that again. Evangelist Rachel, it's good to see you in the house today. Amen. It's good to see Sister, uh, man, Wendy in the house today. Amen. Amen. Singing with the praise and worship. It's good to see the missing Villalobos back in the house Amen. again this morning. Amen. 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 You know who I'm talking about back there. Amen. But it is just good just to see everyone out in the house of the Lord. As our uh, own Pastor Williams is traveling with his son today, they are going to try out for America's Got Talent. Come on, give God some praise. Ah! Our own BDS. Yeah. This situation, yeah. you know, and, and they said going to audition. I said, "Well, y'all, y'all just going to win." Amen. Come on, somebody, give yeah. y'all some praise for that. Yeah. We have young men going out to do positive things. Amen. 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 I heard the young people over at uh, Sunday school this morning uh, playing Bible trivia, and it was just re-enlightening it as I was in my office as they wanted to look through their Bible to look up different scriptures and. And, 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 and they were playing a, a game. But we don't even realize that by them doing those things, they are reinforcing themselves and learning about the Word of God. Amen? Amen. 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 That's just Amen. a wonderful Amen. thing. And as we are learning about the Word of God, I want to close out this month as I close out my series <laughs> on the book of Revelations. We learned last week that the book of Revelations is a book about good news. Amen. It is a testimony of Jesus Christ. It is something that, that, that most folk don't even want to cover because it is such a illustrated book of the Bible. It talks about the end. But as I began to really study and understand the book of Revelation, it's a book of prophecy. And prophecy foretells things that are to come but it never tells you that it's the end. Mm -hmm. It is our simple-minded thinking yeah. that will have us to believe that God will allow us to experience these things that we experience, but to end it all in the book of Revelations. But when Jesus triumphs over evil in this book, how can it ever end? Jesus, you know, God said, I am the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, and the end. Only God can tell us when it's over. Right. Uh -huh. And from the reading of his word, he promises, is, promises us eternal life. And if eternal is forever, and forever is forever, it can't end. Right. Amen. So it shouldn't be a book that we avoid. It, it shouldn't be a book that we run away from. It should be a book that we embrace because it is a book of good news. Amen. And I think I finally got this thing down to a knack that you will never understand revelations if you don't understand Genesis. Amen. Mm. If we are not in the spirit. So I want to go ahead and wrap up Revelations chapter 1. Last, last week we left off at verse number 8. So we're going to finish up today. Revelations chapter 1 verses 9 through 20. Now I'm not going to have you stand up and we're not going to read it because I'm actually going to go through some of these things with you on this morning. I'm going to go back into my preaching mode and I won't be up here long because I know that we have to get ready for our family and friends day on today. How many of us made a dish for family and friends day today? How many of us remember? Elder Lucy and I was talking early last week and we got into a panic. I said, you know, this last Sunday of the month kind of snuck up on me. I didn't really remember to announce to everyone that we need to make anything. But then I just relaxed in the Lord and said, our people know. They know the last Sunday. And if they didn't bring anything, I know that people will contribute anyway. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we just left all that up to the Lord. We didn't call anyone and start. And I knew that things were going good because the only person I wanted to call, I hung out with for a little bit yesterday. And he told me he was going to make me some good old baked beans with some little wiener sausages in there. And I just got all excited. 
The book of Revelation chapter 1 verses 9 through 20. And I want us to understand that yes, through the tough times of life, through the death of a loved one, through the injury of a friend, through losing our jobs or maybe losing our home, I want you to understand that God is always with you. The word of God says that he will never leave nor forsake you. And I don't understand how people, Christians, that proclaim that they believe in God will kill themselves. I've been there. I know what it's like to feel that you have just hit the rock bottom of your life Amen. and that you just don't want to live anymore. Amen. Amen. Reminds me of this guy named Harold. Harold had been battling the bottle for many years just with a straight up drunk beating on his children, fussing at his wife, always in the bottle. And Harold hit that point that I was so familiar with, rock bottom. Uh -huh. There he was in his bathroom, laying on the porcelain floor, thinking about what he hadn't been able to accomplish because of his addiction. So he decided right then and there to end it all. So he picked up the shotgun and went to the bathroom and as he loaded up the bullets and everything, and he began to contemplate how better off his family would be without him, he began to cry out to God. Mm -hmm. Harold had never cried before, never released everything to God. But this day, when he hit the rock bottom, gun in his hand, finger on the trigger, he began to cry out to God. <clears throat> And it was at that very moment that God heard his cries. It was at that very moment that Harold realized that he had more power and control over his life than the Bible. It was at that very moment that God touched his life right then and there. And it was right <laughs> then and there that Harold decided that he was going to change his life. The same God that was with Harold in that bathroom is the same God that's with each and every single one of us as we're facing these things that we face in life. Amen. As we're facing the difficulties in life. I was just talking to another pastor this morning and we were talking about the aging of our family, the aging of our parents and the difficulties of, of dealing with that situation, the difficulties of losing a loved one. I was listening to someone to describe losing a child to death. And, and it's just something that, that the person said, it just feels like that someone just reaches in and rips your heart out and then puts it back in after it's been almost destroyed. It's the closest way that this lady described losing her child. And just as God was with Harold, God is with each and every single one of us. In chapter 1 of Revelation, verse number 9, Notice how verse number 9 states that John was exiled in Patmos because of his faithfulness to the word of God and his testimony in Jesus. In verse number 5, remember we discovered that Jesus is the faithful witness. But here was John giving testimony to Jesus' word. See, when we go and we give a testament or a te testimony or we bear witness in court, that witness that we give in court is regarded as very, very high because we've seen it. Here's John that saw the actions of Jesus, and here he is again seeing the words of God while he's exiled on this island. Mm -hmm. Now, the word of God also tells us what? That no eyes have seen, no ears have heard, no mind can comprehend what God has in store for those who diligently love and seek us. But if you continue to read, it says, but these things can be revealed to you in the spirit. John was in the spirit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. John was able to bear witness Man. to the testimony of Jesus because he was in the spirit. Just like all of us are commanded to be in the spirit when it's time for us to bear witness. We can't go out there and bear witness just to anything. I, I, 
your testimony has to come with some power and authority. And if you're bearing witness to something and have no power and authority, the folks that you're trying to bear witness to will not see it, will not hear it, will not comprehend it or understand it because there's no spirit involved in it. So here it is showing us how we must be in the spirit in order to fully receive from God. So here is John. He's saying, listen, check this out. I'm here to bear witness to the testimony of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, that's all he was saying. And then as we went on to go down there and describe it, they said, well, the book of Revelation is so coded out. It's, it's filled with so many different illustrations and things and talking about horns and kings and queens and, and women and this and that and beasts. And it's so the reason why John wrote it that way, it was because that you you have to be in the spirit to understand what he was writing. Because if John was just to write it out the way God really gave it to him, without all the illustrations, number one, the folk would have never allowed that book to be written. They would have destroyed it on the spot. So John, in his wisdom, illustrated it so that those of us in kingdom can understand it, but those outside of kingdom would just say there's a bunch of mumbo jumbo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. Amen. And that's exactly what happens. Most folks that don't know anything about the word of God will tell you that the book of Revelation doesn't mean anything. That it's just a scary story. Check this out. Check this out. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16. Read, write that down. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16. This is what it says. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and it is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped, and for every good work. My God. Wait, wait, wait. Let me say that again so we can get that. Repeat after me. All scripture, All scripture. is given by the inspiration of God. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God. And then it goes on to say what? And it is what? Profitable. Whoa, 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 whoa. If all scripture is the divine word of God and it is profitable, why do we ignore so much of it? Amen, amen. If the word of God profits you, why don't we want to read it? Amen. If someone came along and said that I have something for you that will profit your life, profit your finances, profit your feelings, profit your relationships, profit you, why would you turn away from it? But we do. Oh, I love it. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and it is profitable for what doctrine? Profitable for reproof, profitable for correction, profitable for instruction, profitable in righteousness that man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped, and ready for every good work. Thoroughly equipped. That means without being profitable, you can't be equipped. Amen. Without doctrine, you're not equipped. You're not equipped. Without being reproof, you're not equipped. So being profitable makes you equipped so that you can go out and conduct every good work. This was John. And this is why God allowed him to be placed where he was because he was ready to be able to receive from the Holy Spirit so that he can be profitable in the works that he's doing. And look at the prophets right now. We're still turning folk over to Christ just by the word of God. Amen. Just through scripture and what we do. Check out verse number 10. In verse number 10, in verse number 10, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as a trumpet saying, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. Thou who you seek, write in the book and I send it to the seven churches which are in Asia. Then he went on the list where all the seven churches were. We represent the seven churches. The seven churches, we are the ones that represent it. These letters and these visions that John was given was to each and every single one of us so that we can understand how to be profitable in building the kingdom. Amen. So many of us run out there and talk about building the kingdom 
and we don't be profitable about it. We don't turn over anyone. I've been noticing that. I've been watching. There's some folk who are on Facebook from sunrise to sunset all day long, and all they do is preach on Facebook. Every 15 seconds, they put out another revelation. Yeah. I'm like, do any of you have a job? <laughs> Come on now. I was at this church, and this guy said this to me. I was over here, and it ain't profitable to no one. Then they showing you pictures of mansions and yachts and, uh -huh. and boats and this and that. And they want us to believe that that's all that God wants us to have is a mansion and a yacht here on earth. Right, right. Mm, on. How is that going to profit me? How are they going to profit God? How are they going to do anything? Look at what he preached and taught here to the seven churches. One church lost their way. They were so in love with God and, and they had a relationship with God. And then all this stuff got in the way. They were so worried about building and this and that that they fell away from God. And God said, Ephesians, get back in line with me. Come back to your first love. Let me make you profitable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In other words, Kevin, he was saying, let me make you better. Amen. And that's one of the things, and, and that's why when we, when I felt that the church, that we were falling away from God because we were so, so, so worried about the building down the street, I just pulled back. Just stopped talking about it. Because I don't want it to be about building, I want it to be about people. When you can walk in here and just say, you know what? I came in here this morning, and I'm leaving different than the way I came in. And I don't want it to be. And you know what I love about it and what God has shown me? That prophets take time to build. You're not going to change instantly. I know what the word of God said, that once you come to Christ, old things are put away. But there's something, there's a time period that that happens. You just got to keep coming and let God keep working on you. And let the prophets keep growing in you. Let the word of God keep growing in you. And you will be right back out of here and fall right back into that same mess that they were in before. Amen. Come out, come out. And then the only thing that it profits is the preachers. I'm just going to leave that alone. I'm trying to be. Check out verse number 11. John is told in verse number 11 to send messages from God which were received on the Lord's days to the seven churches located over there in Asia. Well, study these messages extensively later on, and, 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 and you can study those later on in the rest of the chapters, but I'm telling you that these letters that he sent out were scathing. How many of us, if somebody walked in here right now and began to just scave us out? And say that we're not fasting enough, we're not praying enough, we're not giving enough, we're not evangelizing enough. And we just, oh my God, we'll be offended. We will walk around here, Bishop, I can't believe that we allowed some. But if it's the true word of God and that's what we are, then all we can do is get better. Amen. See, I hadn't even talked to Kevin Amen. today. Y'all was all up in there. That's why I got all quiet. I said, I can't shout when they all up in my sermon. <laughs> <laughs> Lord, you gave it to them too? Amen. Because we're all on the same page. On, it's designed to help make us better. Better, man, man, man. better in our praise. Better in our worship. Better in our fasting. Yeah, yeah. Better, better in our prayer life. Better. And when you get better at that, more people are attracted because they know that you're better. Amen. 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 I love the word that the person used with Elder Kevin. Unusual. You don't stick to the doctrine. You have children and young people doing things in the church that we ain't never seen before. That's right. That's right. You can put together the choir and you guys just go out with a few people and you make it sound so angelic. Amen. Unusual. Come on. Amen. 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 You love the people when they come in <coughs> and you love them when they're going out. Yes. yes, yes. And that's what it's supposed to be about. It's supposed to be about love. It's supposed about being able to receive people out of love. I remember we made mistakes. We had the young ladies come in one time. They had on the halter tops and all the other stuff. And we and there were folk all over them. You don't dress like that to come to church. You don't do this. You, they, they, and they never came back. They never came back. But we learned from that. That we received them just as they are because maybe that's all they had. Amen. Oh, come on, somebody. Amen. Maybe that's all they had. 
And we're looking at the outside exterior. And as a matter of fact, like I always preach and teach, if a woman can come up here and sit up here half naked, if the preacher can't focus on the word of God, the problem ain't the young lady, the That's problem right. is that. That's right. Because the devil will never right. send you coke when he knows you like Pepsi. That's right. right. Amen. 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 So we've got to understand these things. We've got to understand these things from the perspective of the word of God. Then verses 12 through 16 describe what God looked like to John. That's why when folk now walk up to me, oh, oh, Bishop, the Lord said to me, and God told me, and God said this, and God did that. I can look at him and go, well, what does God sound like? What do you mean? I mean, when God's talking to you all the time, he's giving you all these revelations, what does he sound like? Amen. Better yet, if you're so much in the spirit and you talk to God that much, what does he look like? John was in the spirit and was able to give a description of God. Said that his hair was white as snow, that his feet was like pure brass, and his eyes were like fire. That's right. That's right. He was so much into the spirit, receiving the book of Revelations, that he actually saw God. Now check this out. Moses couldn't even see God's face. Oh, Lord. God said, I'm going to have to let you see my backside because the continents of my face will put you to death. Yeah. But yet John, yeah. if he saw his eyes, he had to be looking at them in his face. Yeah. Oh! Yeah. I want to seek God's face. Yeah. I want to seek God's word. In other words, I just want to be a little bit, say it now, better. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Y'all with me now, right? Yeah. Now understanding this thing, he saw God's face standing amongst the churches, standing amongst the people, because we represent the churches. So there was God standing amongst his people. Oh my God, oh my God. John was able to see his face. Now check this out. The number seven represents something. Uh -huh. The number seven represents completeness. Uh -huh. The number seven represents greatness. Remember, God created his greatest creation on the sixth day. Uh -huh. His crown jewel, man, you and me, he created on the sixth day. But on that seventh day, uh -huh. that first full day that we had with God was a day of rest. God took his greatest creation and said, now on this day, the seventh day of completion, now that I'm done, rest. The world will have us thinking the exact opposite. Have you ever noticed that anything that's with God, the world has it looking the exact opposite? God says rest, the world says you must work. Which is the most profitable fast food chain in America? Say it again. Mm. Y'all think that, right? No. You would think that McDonald's is the most profitable. Yeah. Per capita, the most profitable is Chick-fil-A. Yeah. Yeah. And they're closed on Sundays. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Come on, somebody. Per capita, Chick-fil-A is, is more valuable than McDonald's and they're closed on Sunday. McDonald's is now even open on Christmas. They said they made more money on Christmas Day. All the shareholders got a big dividend. They got a 90 cent per, they got a 90 cent dividend because McDonald's was open on Christmas Day. Wow. Now they're saying that we have to be. Now if you know if McDonald's does it, guess who's following? And and, and there you go. Wait for somebody to say it. <laughs> the seven churches are a complete representation of all the churches of, of God. The messages to them represent a complete message of God. The seven candles represent the seven churches. The seven churches represent all the churches. Remember, there's seven continents. Oh my God. So the seven churches we represented all the seven churches, or the seven candles represented the seven churches of the seven continents. See, God isn't far, far from the truth. He created it. He's not going to deviate us to confuse us. 
So there he was, talking to the seven churches, giving the seven churches, giving the messages, and the seven spirits represents the completeness and the fulfillment of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit on all seven continents. So that we can get this word of God down to the understanding of who and where we are in this thing. The book of Revelations is just a great book. Mm -hmm. Going back to my guy Harold, there he was, several years later, sitting on his couch, reading the Bible and thanking God. And his daughters came downstairs and said, Daddy, we just wanted to say that we love you and good night. Harold hadn't heard that in many years. But at that point, there he was, receiving from his daughters. You know what his daughter was saying? Daddy came home. Yes. We're so happy that daddy is here with us and that he's home. Harold began to cry and began to thank God for all the blessings. And he didn't try to be big and bad. He understood that this thing with alcohol was a day-by-day -day step. He understood that every day he had to get into that word, understand that word, and that God was with him and would never leave nor forsake him. Amen. This guy is named Harold Hughes. He became governor of the state of Iowa. Mm. And now he's a very respected senator in Congress. Oh, I'm talking about going from nothing to something. I'm talking about becoming better. And through the book of words, through the book of Revelation, we can find out ways that we can become better. Better in our family, better in our relationships with our family, better at work, better at school, better at church. Folks, we got to do better here. We, we got to do better within our own ministry. We have to do better in our giving. And I'm not talking about putting stuff in the offering box. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about just doing better in our giving right here in the church. Yeah. Seeing things that need to be done and just doing them. Amen. Rather than us running around here and asking to have it done. See something, do it. See something that needs to be done, do it. We got to be better in our evangelism. Pastor Stewart said the other day that him and Elder Lucy was going to have to hit the streets again this, uh, this spring. I thought it was kind of strange that he didn't say the church. He made it personal. Me and Elder Lucy. But if they're out there, we need to be out there. Amen. We need to do better. Amen. We need to do better when it comes to coming to Sunday school. Amen. At least my leaders should be here. The elders are not here. How, how would the members show up? We've got to do better. We gotta do better even in our extensions of helping other ministries out. One of the things that I've learned is that when we go out, we don't go by ourselves. It ain't just one or two of us. We take a group of people. Ever notice when other ministries come here, there's only a couple of folks. But can we do better? Can we do better even with our own membership? Are we evangelizing and saying, come to church? Even the folk right now, we should bug them to death until they just say, you know what? I'm just I have some folk that's coming here this afternoon that's going to be giving us some presentation, and I haven't even looked at what they present. Pre present, and I ain't gonna lie to you. I, I want to put the I want to put the check in the box. And so they say they have a health presentation. I told them to come on, and uh, so I told them to come on. And the reason why I'm letting them come today is because they just would not leave me alone. They called me every week, every other day, and they just wore me down till finally I said, just come. We got to be that way. Amen. With our family members, we got to be relentless on this thing. Call them up all the time. You need to come to church with me. You need to come to church with me. You need to come. To and they finally, one of the, I've realized that. That was my lesson. That eventually, they're going to say yes. Mother Betty, those people at Walmart, I'm still saying to remember not invited. They said they were coming. They ain't show up. I'm going back next week. I'm going to say, y'all didn't come. Here's another flyer. Come. And then the next week, I'm going to come. and see him again. Come. I know Elder Lucy's family the same way. They see her coming, they go, oh, no, here comes the Holy Roller. Because I know she's beating them up. And we all got to be that way. Even with our friends. I heard Minister Brianna preaching last week. And I thought, you know what? If the young people at her school see her that way, she needs to start bugging them. 
She needs to have that confidence now to push that button. How come you didn't come hear me speak last week? The third Sunday is my Sunday. I want my friends from school to come hear me speak. But you know what? That's partly my fault because I got to work with her to help her make up some flyers so she can give them out. Every month she needs the bug. And she was telling me that she was going to come out here and do a, a step dance for them. They would all be out here cheering. So why can't they come hear the word of God? Amen. We got to do better. Even with our family members, even with our friends, even me, I have to do better. I have to call people more often and, 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 and encourage them to come back. There's some folk that, no, there's some folk that ain't going to have to come back. <laughs> Y'all know why I am. Sitting right on downstairs. No, I'm just kidding. But. We got to bug her. The young lady that you were talking about, the one that came, you got to bug her. We got to bug her. And we have to do better at that because we can't move forward with just the folk we have. We can't move kingdom and build kingdom. We can, but we can do better with more. It is what it is. If we have to go to holding two services a Sunday, we can do better. We got enough ministers. Matter of fact, coming up here really soon, we're going to be having an afternoon service anyway. Y'all ain't going to see me all the time. Y'all going to see Elder Kevin. It's going to be his service. But we got to do better by coming here to support him. Amen. We can't have the brother in here all by himself. Well, we could. Amen. But we're not. We have to do better. Look in your spiritual life at what you can do to do better. There's a thing that we had in the Navy that I used to teach all the time, and then I'm going to close. And I used to call it ship, shipmate self. Ship, shipmate self. And there's guys that, that I've retired, have been retired for some time now. And there's guys who still email me back and forth, and when they close, they say ship, shipmate self. What did that mean? It meant ship. Every single morning, every single day that you woke up, you had to think about what you could do to make your ship better. Shipmate. You had to make and think about what you could do to make your shipmate's job easier to help make the ship better. And if someone was taking care of the ship, and someone was taking care of your fellow shipmate, someone was taking care of you. Amen. And we got to flip that thing around Amen. and apply the ministry. Church members self. We got to start thinking about what we can do to make our church better. We got to fast on that. We have to pray on that. We have to ask God for deliverance and direction on that. And then we just need to put it in action. Church. Members. What can we do to help make our members' lives a little bit better? There we were this year running around giving out 5,000 toys. That's what we gave out this year. But did we make sure that all the members of our church received even the ones that weren't here, did we make sure? Did we save some of that, that when they did come back, we would have something? Does all the members of our church, do all their children have coats? Do all their children have what they need? Taking care of our members. And if you're taking care of your church, and you're taking care of your fellow members, God is going to take care of you as he was standing in the midst of the seven churches. Rest on your feet and give God some praise. You know, the book of Revelations, the first chapter, highlights the fact that God cares about us and he desires the best for us. Amen. It's for that reason that he wants to tell each and every single one of us about the events that are coming forth on earth. This is a book of prophecy. This is something that's going to happen. And we've got to remember that as we pray about our church and our members and ourselves, that God is going to continue to bless us more abundantly than we can ever imagine. We just got to do better. Do better in our praise. Do better in our worship. And do better in our fellowship. Amen. Think about those that you can invite today at the Family and Friends Day. Bug them. Become a pest. Oh, it works. I'm a witness to it. 
They'll give in. Brianna, they'll say, oh, we're just going to come here, huh? So she can leave us alone. Leave notes on their locker. Yeah. Yeah. Bug them in the line. Bug them. Nene, bug them. Y'all, y'all, you know, bug them. And watch what happens. Can we just give God some praise just one more time? Most gracious Heavenly Father, Abba Father, we thank you for the picture of yourself. Yes. Oh Father, we can picture you as God. We can see you, Father. Hair white as snow, feet as solid brass, eyes like fire. Father, we thank you for your kindness, your acceptance, and your understanding. And Father, help us to be more like you. Oh, Father, help us to encourage others to come and get to know you in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we thank you, we glorify you, and we magnify your name. These are the things that we ask, we seek, and we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let's give God some praise. And with that, you are dismissed, and we will see.